Hello Fingsters! So today we're going to be talking about data abstraction in Python and that's all part of the Python object oriented programming. And the topics we'll cover in this video today, we're going to define the term abstract, just that word in the English language and understand what that means. And then we'll extend that a step to discuss what abstraction means before finally getting on to data abstraction and how that might work in Python. We'll understand what an abstract class is and what makes it an abstract class and we will use a specific example to create one of those. We'll also highlight a couple of errors that you need to be aware of to avoid and we'll then create two subclasses from the abstract class and instantiate two objects from those subclasses. So what does abstract mean? And the dictionary definition is something that exists as an idea, a feeling or a quality, not as a material object. So it's a concept. For instance, if we talk about happiness or pain or faith, these things aren't material or concrete. But when you speak to them or when you speak to someone about them, they know what the term refers to. So that's an abstract concept. So how does that then relate to abstraction? An abstraction refers to exactly that, general concepts or rules that others can understand. So I've used the example here of a ball. When we talk of a golf ball or a tennis ball or a soccer ball, it's a very concrete thing. We know that they exist. We know how big they are. We know what color they generally are. Um, shape, size, everything. Um, they will have a, a, a texture to them. There will be things that we all understand about a golf ball or a tennis ball. But if I just talk about a ball, that's an abstraction. We don't know to what I'm referring. We don't know whether I'm talking about a spherical object or an ellipsoid, um, as in a rugby ball. We don't know size. We don't know use. It may not be a ball that's used for sports. It may be a ball that's used for wrecking a building. Or it may be a ball that's used in a ball bearing race in a piece of machinery. So if I just use the term ball, that is an abstraction. So data abstraction, what does that mean? So we know abstract, we know abstraction. What is data abstraction? So when you start coding, you quite often create a class with a general idea of what you wish to achieve or what your client wishes to use it for. And if you've been following some of my other articles and videos, we've been using a grocery store stock management system. And so a good example of an abstract class would be a generic stock class in a grocery store stock management system. You know very well that a stock item in a grocery store will have a number of common things. It will probably have a stock code, it'll have a name, it may have a weight, it may have a manufacturer. There are a number of things that almost every item will have. But there's a whole lot of things you don't know. There are so many different grocery items. You might get um, fruit or bread or canned items or fish or steak or... So you can't cater to all of those. There's a degree of complexity there that you can't do from the beginning before you've even started writing. So you can create an abstract class, and that abstract class just represents general stock item characteristics. If you create a subclass from that, you may choose not to use some of those characteristics, although you will need to zero them out or have a placeholder for them. And there may be other characteristics you wish to add. But at the moment, when you start coding, the stock class is an abstract class representing general stock item characteristics. Now, the thing that makes it an abstract class is that it contains abstract methods. So you'll have a whole lot of generic attributes that you feel a stock item has, but there'll also be a number of methods that you believe uh, subclasses will utilize. So for instance, in the example you'll see we code, we'll talk about a sale and we'll talk about expiry. Now those are two things that sooner or later in a grocery store life you're going to have to address for a stock item. 
but every single one of them will be differ different depending on the item to which they're applied. So rather than try and write something that deals with all that complexity, we create an abstract method, and all that has is the title of the method, and there is no action within it. So having got an abstract method into that class, it now becomes an abstract class. You cannot instantiate an object from it. If you try to, you'll get an error. So we will show you that in the code. The only thing you can do with that abstract class is then create a subclass from which you can then instantiate an object. So a point to remember, an error to avoid, all subclasses must implement the abstract method. So if we have sale and expiry in our abstract class as abstract methods, then you need to have them in your subclasses. You may choose not to use them. You may just put pass in there, but you must have them. If you don't have them, Python will call an error for you. So that said, let's go and do some coding. So the first thing to note when we're creating an abstract class is that we need to import a module called ABC. So you'll see the first line from ABC import capital ABC abstract method. So these are the two methods we will use to create this class. Now when you create an abstract class, there's not a lot of difference to creating an ordinary class. Instead, what we do here is we put the ABC within the parentheses, and when we actually want to create an abstract method, we will actually use the decorator at abstract method above the method that we're going to use as an abstract method. Those are really the two major differences. Everything else that you see there is the same as an ordinary class. You're using the init function to define the attributes. You can have normal methods. These normal methods will still be accessible from subclasses through the normal inheritance process. But an abstract method, and here you can see sale and expiry, they have no actions. They just have to pass syntax in there. This is what makes this an abstract class. And you'll see here, if I try to instantiate this object, canned peas, using the stock abstract class, and I've correctly filled in all of these attributes here, and if I try to instantiate that, we will get an error message. And I'll just enlarge that so you can see it type error can't instantiate abstract class stock with abstract methods expiry and sale. So it's impossible. What we have to do is we have to create a subclass from this and then from the subclass we will instantiate the particular object that we wish to use. So let's go across and we'll do that now. So here we have the same code there's just one real difference at the top, which is I'm using a formula in here that uses date time for the expiry date of particular things. So I've imported date time and time delta from the date time module. That aside, all of this top code is exactly the same as you saw previously. We have the stock ABC, so we're creating an abstract class, all the attributes there. We have the normal method, sell price, which is accessible to us at any stage, and we have two abstract methods. Now, underneath that, I'm going to create two subclasses. One is class canned for uh, canned grocery items, and I've called the abstract class stock as the parent. I've given a category of cans, and all I've done, I'm not going to add any other attributes, I'm going to accept all of the ones from the stock item, but I have now put in specific actions for these methods, the abstract methods. So under sale, I've offered a buy so many of these cans uh, for the price of, and basically it's saying you can buy so many cans for the price of one, because that formula there will give you the retail price of one can. Now, 
Cans don't necessarily have an expiry, or if they do, they're very long. So I've chosen not to use that in this particular class. So I've just left the pass notation. If I took this out entirely, I will get an error message. I need to leave it in there. It needs to reflect the one that's up here in the abstract class. I've also created a fruit class. Once again, we have class fruit with a stock as the parent, category produce. Once again, I'm not adding or taking away any attributes. Um, and now I've used both abstract classes, sale and expiry. And I've added a, a buy to at the discounted price of X, whatever that discount happens to be. And I've also printed what the normal retail price is um, as a comparison. And then under expiry, I've just done a quick calculation. And if you want to print out an expiry, you just put in the number of days when you call the expiry method and it will print out the date of expiry of that fruit. So slightly different. And that's the beauty of abstract classes. So we can use the sale and not use the expiry for canned goods. We can use sale and expiry specifically to fruit. It would be a different set of formulas and a different set of outputs if we were dealing with fish or meat or bread or any of those other grocery items. So up the top here, when we first did this abstract class, we didn't need to know what we were going to sell. All we needed to know is that we had some generic attributes in there and we had a couple of abstract methods that we felt every stock item will use. So if we come down to the bottom here, we can instantiate two objects, one from each subclass. So I will instantiate a can of chicken soup there, um, buy price, markup, volume, manufacturer, and under fruit, I will instantiate a golden delicious apples, price markup it's a bag of apples and I don't have a manufacturer so I've just put a empty string in there there needs to be a placeholder obviously or else we will get an error message because we haven't supplied the required number of attributes having instantiated both of those objects we will then call a number of things first off with the canned objects we will decide to sell three cans for the price of one so we just call c465.sale which will call the canned class sale method we just need to enter how many cans we wish to sell for the price of one but we will also call the sell price which if you remember is right up here in the abstract class so you can access the normal methods of the abstract class as you would with any inheritance Similarly, with the fruit, we will call sale, but we need to put a discount value in there. So we're going to give a 25% discount. And because it's fruit, we are putting an expiry and we've decided that the fruit will expire two weeks from now. And um, we should print that out. So let's make that happen and see what the outcome is. And I'll make that larger so you can see it. So there you see that we uh, did the sale method from the canned subclass. Buy three cans of chicken soup for the price of 95 cents. Um, and the retail price of one can is normally 95 cents. And with the apples, buy two bags of golden delicious apples at a discounted price of 186, normal retail price 248. And there is our expiry date. So you can see that abstract classes are a really useful way of taking a lot of complexity out of the repetitive use um, for stock items in this particular case. We don't need to keep recoding all these attributes because they're generic attributes. We also don't need to, to think about these items. They exist. We need to include them. We just need to create subclasses of that abstract class and then we can add, subtract, customize, do what we wish to within that subclass. So let's just go back to the slides. So in summary today, we defined the term abstract and then extended that to understand what abstraction means. And we discussed how Python uses 
data abstraction to abstract away complexity. We learned what an abstract class is and what makes it so. It's that abstract method that exists within it. And we used a grocery store example to create an abstract class, which was the stock item, a generic item. It, uh, it has no material or concrete um, physic- physicality. It is simply a concept. And then the subclasses could obviously be created from that. We showed you how you could avoid a couple of errors. And then we created two subclasses from the abstract class and instantiated two objects from those subclasses. And then we called the subclass methods and showed you how you can also call the abstract class attributes and methods just as you do in a normal inheritance situation. So hopefully that helped you with understanding abstraction and obviously the different levels of abstraction we dealt with from the abstract stock to the less abstract or the concrete classes to the final material objects. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.